it is February 1st, 2020. This is Bullet. We just finished a walk. Um, I thought I'd come back to just kind of check on my chrysalides, but I'll show you kind of <laughs> my uh, garden space and stuff. Um, these are just pots from last year. This is where I put a lot of herbs and pollinating plants. That lump is actually my compost bin that I dumped out. It's it was frozen, so it's just a lump, but there's a bunch of good compost soil under there. And then this is my greenhouse. So I do some seed stuff in here. These are a bunch of tomato cages. Um, so here are my enclosures, which have eight um, Eastern Black Swallowtail chrysalides in them. These are eight um, Eastern Black Swallowtail chrysalides. That's the plural form of chrysalis. And they all pupated um, in October. So unlike the monarch butterfly, which we all know and love probably the most, um, these guys overwinter. So um, they'll come out hopefully this spring. They can be a little bit um, unpredictable so it's possible they'll even chill out for a year or two, but we'll see. I'm guessing they'll mostly come out. You'll see some green and brown ones. That to me doesn't have any information. It's not, you'll see brown and green. That honestly does not really determine anything that I've noticed. Um, not male or female. It's not a camouflage thing. It's not a time of year thing. I don't know. We don't really know why they do it. But yeah, these are just my eight swallowtails hanging out in here until spring. Um, so yeah, I have them out. I raise them outdoors year round and I have them in these pop-up tents, which I also use for the monarchs. Um, I just think raising out in nature is what is best for them. And, uh, I also think that uh, it cues, gives them the cues they need to know whether or not it's spring and stuff like that. So like for the monarch butterfly, I would tell them kind of when to migrate and keep them on their schedule and this, these guys know what time of year it is. So this might not be the best setup actually. These can be prone to rodents, but we live in a very urban environment. So, um, a lot of the rodents don't have any predators, and I think they've got a lot of food. So, like, I've just been putting a food fight on this, and they've been left alone all winter. So, that's pretty great. Um, so yeah, I just keep, I check on these guys about, we take the dog back here every day, so, you know, I peek at them and give a good check every so often. So, yeah, I'm excited to see these guys come out this spring. Um, definitely be showing all of that. So... Yeah, it's really cold today. <laughs> it is Wisconsin in February, so yeah, here we are. All right, now that we're back inside, um, we're having a really lazy Saturday today. He's lazy. <laughs> now that I'm back inside and having some coffee, I'm actually gonna look at Amazon and see what seeds I can get. Um, I haven't ordered any yet this year. I feel a little behind, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna have a look. All right, so here is our search query, and we've got a lot of options as far as milkweed seeds go. We're kind of spoiled for choice. Um, just thought we'd take a look and see what's on Amazon. This is actually the ones I got last year, and I absolutely love them. Um, I do not think I will get this kind, this this particular pack this year, I mean. Um, it, it's good for trying the different um, seeds in your area to see what works. And they all have different sewing instructions. Um, I think it's a really good option if you're planting milkweed for the first time so you can figure things out. Um, for example, I figured out that the pink swamp just was struggling. I don't know why, but the flowers are beautiful. The Mexican blood flower is not native to um, southern Wisconsin. That's more native to Mexico and the south. 
but I liked growing it. It was nice. Um, this showy milkweed did fairly well last year. I'm definitely going to get some common milkweed. That's what grows most of all around here, as well as this butterfly weed. So I'm going to make sure to get at least these two varieties because I think they are good for my area. Um, but yeah, I just recently posted about this on Instagram and, uh, yeah, I would recommend this pack for anybody just getting started for the first time. I'm curious to see what will come up this year compared to last year. Like, for example, this stuff would not be coming back. It's an annual up here. It cannot survive the winter. It's tropical, so, yeah. Oh, this one's Amazon's Choice, so let's take a look at that. All right, so we've got... Blood flower, butterfly, common, and showy. Huh. This might actually be a really good pack for me, and it's only... Uh, where's that price? Oh. <laughs> it's only $9.99 um, for four packets. I think that's pretty good. They usually give you, like, 100 per pack. Um, but I'll definitely get some of, like, common and butterfly weed. But the blood flower and showy did for, well for me last year, so... I'll definitely consider this pack, huh? It looks like the Seeds Needs brand also just sells like their um, individual types um, individually. It doesn't necessarily have to be a variety pack. So um, I've passed Pink Swamp and Butterfly Weed and Common. So this is a good option. I really was impressed with their seeds. They germinated really fast and I don't really have any problems with them. This is interesting. Butterfly weed gorilla droppings. Huh. So what does this mean? Did they just kind of pack? So no fecal matter. Looks like droppings. People will leave your plantings alone. Huh, that's kind of cool. I don't think this price point is for me, but that's an interesting way to uh, sow seeds and plant seeds. I don't know, it's kind of cool. All right, so I decided to get these milkweed seeds. Um, I could see myself using all four of them, especially the common milkweed and the butterfly milkweed, but um, I do love the Mexican blood flower, which is otherwise known as tropical milkweed. And the showy just has really cool, sorry, focus on those. The showy has really cool flowers, so I'm excited to get those going in some starter trays. Um, I'll definitely be filming my whole like seed starting process because it's a little bit more involved than throwing them in the ground outside, but not too much. It's still easy. Um, and then I just ordered this um, digital hydrometer because I my other one is like broken. So that's exciting, but it'd be nice to be able to tell what humidity is happening for my indoor plants again. So yeah, we're gonna get these things. Mm, turning the camera around on myself, not very comfortable with it, but here we are. Um, it's the first video on this channel, so I kind of figured I would at least pop in and introduce myself for a quick second. Um, my name is Emily. I am in my early 30s. I live in southern Wisconsin um, with my husband and two pets. Um, in a pretty urban area, we rent, but we are lucky enough to have a uh, garden plot in the back, so I love that. Um, April Nodes on Instagram had asked me how I got into raising butterflies and uh, honestly it's a little bit of a long story but it all stems from my childhood love of nature and animals and plants and insects and all things like that. Um, I was definitely the weirdo, the weird little kid that uh, I was definitely the weird little kid that collected bugs and kept them in jars and stuff like that and uh, the monarch 
caterpillar was one I always had in the summers that I raised a butterfly and I just loved it every single time. And so I did it actually through most of my youth and uh, through, I want to say like early high school and college even. Um, but you know, I graduated college and then I was like on my own for a little bit. I was moving apartments a lot and uh, working weird service jobs and stuff like that because I'm a creative person. It was hard to find a job. <laughs> um, so, uh, but a couple years ago, I was just walking our dog and I found a monarch egg on um, a leaf. I just happened to notice it. So I brought it home. And then one thing after one thing led to another and uh, I ended up bringing that egg and so many others home and then we had like 30 to 40 caterpillars and chrysalides in our kitchen and it kind of went from there and I've been doing it the last two summers. It was actually last summer that I decided to do a pollinator garden in the back because we did have the space and nobody was using it. So I just kind of, you know, started researching different native plants and how to um, grow milkweed, which kind of went into gardening some other veggies and herbs. And then all of a sudden I realized my cat did not care about any of the plants I had in the house. So I was like, I'm going to get more. So that's where, why I'm here. And that's why I have my Instagram and stuff like that. And I'm just here to journal my love of plants and spread awareness about pollinators, especially the monarch butterfly. Oh, so I think the rest of this afternoon, I'm just gonna sit down with this book. I got it. So naughty. Seriously. Eowyn, good lord. So yeah, I'm excited to get into this book. So if you liked this video and want to keep up on my adventures in plants and citizen science with butterflies, please like and subscribe. Hit the little bell so you don't miss an upload. And leave a comment if you have any questions. Thank you, and I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.